So before I do anything drastic to this uh, mini strat, I decided instead to just make a Telecaster body, because they're simple, um, out of some scraps. So you need to have the right scraps. What I have is this guy, it's about nine and three eighths wide, inch and a quarter thick, roughly speaking. Um, so what I can do is plane this down and then section it, you know, with 16 inch or whatever it is, I think 15 inch lengths, and then uh, glue it all together to look like that. And that'll be my body blank. Uh, oh, did I write 13? 13 and a half is what you'd get. So, and I think that's right for a Telecaster, or at least it can be. Um, and I may not want to do a Telecaster, I may want to do like a Mustang body or something interesting. I do like the uh, the way a Tele or a Strat sits so neatly in basically any design of guitar stand, whereas like my old um, Jaguar, you had to sit it in one of these where the bottom would pivot. And even at that, if you sat there too long, it would slide one way or the other. It's kind of a hassle. I don't know what people do with flying V's and explorers and stuff. But uh, the problem I have with this thing, the reason I don't want to screw it up, is this neck joint with the giant shims in it. It's just so ugly. Uh, I really don't want to mount a um, tremolo in it, and I don't want to drive the screws deeper into the neck. I don't want to use different screws so that I screw up the threads that are set in that neck. So the solution is eliminate the body, which is the problem. So I don't have a planer. What am I going to do with this piece of wood? Well, that's where brilliance comes in. This is my router, and I have attached it to a little plank. Uh, this part of it is that thin, crappy uh, wallboard stuff made out of light density fiberboard, I think it is. Uh, it's just rigid enough when I put these braces on it to hold its own weight. And you can see it's got little feet. And the feet slide really nicely. So what I'm going to do is lower the router until it makes contact with the wood and then just slide it back and forth. And it's just the right distance to be wider than this piece of wood. I think the gap here is about 20 and a half inches that I've got of travel. So plenty of travel for what I need to do. And I'm going to cut my 16 inch sections, plane them using my router, and then glue them together as per the diagram. And then I can make a decision about body styles. The reason I go with 16 inches is because maybe I want to do a strat style, like one of those really sharp cornered super strats. Um, or whatever. Uh, so then, on top of that, so then I was thinking, all right, I'll take the, the, the hardware off of this thing and then just sort of use all of the electronics. Um, I don't use go with a pick guard, so I'm going to do that from behind and do a body cavity. And then I thought, well, why don't I go with a Telecaster, even if I don't do a Telecaster body, use a Telecaster uh, control panel, and then I can route the control panel from the front, but drill all the wire routes, um, through the body. So anyway, there you go. That's the big idea. I'm going to shoot a few minutes of video of how it, how the routing goes with this little device. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. So hopefully this works. And I can use my um, table saw to cut the boards to trim the sides off. And then that should be, if I set my table saw up, perfectly square, then I've got perfect joints that I can glue, and uh, we're off to the races with a body blank of old pine that spent its first 20 years as a waterbed. These are the pieces of my guitar coming together, and here's the piece I'm working on now. So this is what remains of this great big board. I've cut off 17 inch lengths, uh, Telecaster bodies to 16 and a half roughly. So uh, in case you didn't know how to cut straight lines and stuff, you need one of these. This is a builder square. It's got this neat little lip on it. So that hooks against the wood basically. You line it up where you want it. Now I, 
undo this with the other hand, but my clamp's there now. So I just hold the square in place, and then with the other hand, you start your saw. And as soon as you've got a clean, straight line visible all the way across the board, you take this guy away because you don't want to damage it. Like I could scratch this thing all up and then it would be useless to me. So once I get this last piece cut off, we are over here to my handy dandy little routing jig. And then I'll smooth these guys out. The wood is pretty slightly cupped and uh, I can take that out pretty easy. As long as the piece doesn't wobble when it's on the floor there, then uh, when I'm done I'll have perfectly planed planks and then I just have to push it through the table one of them to push it through the table saw there's my skeleton hi buddy and uh, strip it down the middle so that I can glue these guys together sort of a bricklayer pattern um, when viewed from the uh, end and uh, we'll have ourselves a guitar blank okay I decided to move to my uh, workbench better lighting and uh, I don't have to kneel on the floor and I was getting wobbles in the wood uh, in the piece of wood um, that were not uh, good you can't have the piece wobbling so checking for that push in the corners or push in the middle and push down on the corners and if it sits nice and smooth then you can reliably move the thing around and move the plane around and you're gonna get a smooth finish uh, at least a flat plane when you're done. Uh, that is provided that your workbench is perfectly flat. So I mean this is a store-bought desktop. I got it at IKEA and it doesn't weigh a lot but it's you know machined it's perfectly smooth. This is like a melamine or something. Uh, the floor is not perfectly flat because there is a couple of cracks which means the floor is heaving and they never all they did is pour it and let it settle so it's not going to be perfect. So this is a way better work surface. Now, if the workpiece uh, does sit perfectly flat, you're fine. If it doesn't, you can try hitting it, a bit of sandpaper, and see if that takes off the corners. Figure out what corners it's wobbling on, wherever the high spot is, and sand it or sit, try and wear it down. Uh, if sanding it doesn't work in a couple of shots, or if it's a major wobble, then you move to one of these fellas. This is a block plane. So you just hold it down, and it's like a little razor blade pretty hefty one and you start shearing off these nifty little ribbons of wood which are just cool so anyway that's the way to plane the wood down to make it flat that's one way of doing it I suppose I could do the whole job that way but no way I'm into power tools um, I know a guy with a proper planer and I'd have this done in five minutes but I also wanted to see if this would work it's a voyage of discovery as we say so once I got my workpiece set ready. I've got a very little sight window uh, to work with in there, but it's enough. So, like any router, at least any old router, I twist this to lower the router bit. As soon as I'm touching wood, touching the deck, then um, I think we're good to start see how much wood we take off a little bit at a time and once I've touched every bit of the top of this piece of wood then I know I have a perfectly flat plane flip it and then of course it shouldn't wobble because it should be a perfectly flat plane so where's my ear protection way over here you can just turn your volume down so let's fire this thing up we're not really hitting it a little more. There you go. And let's see what. Yeah, we'll hit it this time for sure. Let's see what we get. So there is some track uh, appearing in the workpiece, but it uh, looks pretty good. I'm taking some wood off, but you know, not a ton of it. Hmm. I don't think this is quite working out. 
way I want. So it's technically working, but time to go to my buddy, use his planer.